All right, guys, so we are gonna do a controlled experiment to show the departure angle between each tire carrier. So we're gonna lift the front of the Forerunner up until our tire carrier contacts the ground. And we're gonna do that, repeat the same process with the other tire carrier. You see this fancy triangle. I wanna know the actual angle we get. So I'm gonna measure the bottom, which would be the wheelbase, and then we're gonna let that fully droop so I can measure the vertical height that we can get to. And if I do a tangent of those two numbers, then I'll get the actual angle in this triangle. So it's about 110.5. Um, he's gonna, we're gonna have him go lift it so this tire is, is almost off the ground. That way we don't get any um, variances in the height because of the droop in the suspension. There you go. It's on it. We're at 41 and 5 eighths. Uh, 41 and a half. The height is 41.5. Okay, so we had 110.5 inches for the wheelbase. We measured it with full droop because it will change slightly. 41.5 inches was how high we got. And just if you're curious, the hitch height on the rear of the trail swing is 19 and 7 eighths inches on this Forerunner with 35 inch tires. So let's see what the other one does. We got the guys over there putting on the competitor's product and we'll see how it goes. We are at 18 and 3 eighths for the hitch height. The hitch height on the rear of the trail swing is 19 and 7 eighths inches. So we're an inch and a half higher. Doesn't sound like much, but for anyone that off-roads, makes a big difference. The other thing to note is how much further this one sticks back, and I think we'll see that when we lift the front of the car and find out the departure angle. Exactly three feet. Inverse tangent. Inverse tangent, told you. 41.5. Inverse tangent. 8.55 degrees. 20.55. Okay. So it's about a two degree difference. Two and a half degrees. Yeah. On the trail swing, you put the hitch pin in first and then you tighten the wedge from the back. For this version, you have to tighten the wedge from the front with a long extension and then you put the hitch pin in. So when you're tightening it and the unit moves, you might have to redo it. Um, we felt that it was simpler to get the hitch pin in there and then tighten it. Whereas this is, as you can see, he's tightening the wedge and as he tightens the wedge, this will move slightly over. So well, our version actually puts the load of if you're towing on the pin, not on the wedge. So put the trail swing on, it's the opposite order. You put the pin in first and then you tighten the hitch from the back. All you need is a 22 or 7 eighths wrench or a socket if you prefer a socket. This happens to be a ratchet wrench, makes it easier for us. So you simply slide that in, you tighten this up from the back right here. And that'll straighten out the swing. You can see it's solid. When you're carrying a 100 pound tire, it's harder to line up two studs than it is one stud. And that's why we welded one stud on the top that you don't have to adjust. It's always there and your wheel is always gonna fit. In order to put this tire on this carrier, you have to line up two studs on the top to your wheel. 
this which if I'm doing it on my own that's gonna be kind of hard I don't, even want, I don't even want to try, you just help me. <laughs> there you go. Okay. It's about 11 and a quarter actually. So you can see, same tire, center of the tire. We're at about seven and three quarter inches. The trail swing puts the wheel and tire almost four inches closer to the body than the competitors. That's better for on-road dynamics and vehicle dynamics in general. When you have that much weight hanging off the back of your vehicle, you want it as close to your hatch as possible. All right, here comes the exciting part. We're gonna dissect both of these tire carriers, but we're not just gonna unbolt them. We're gonna cut them in half. All right, we are going to use a new blade, a DeWalt blade with a DeWalt Sawzall, and we're gonna go straight down the line and cut them off. I'm gonna move out of the way. Cut it in half. Can't believe we actually did that. Well, that was fun, but now we gotta cut the trail swing. And don't worry, we got a new blade. New blade. Let me get out of the way. This is the blade we used to cut the other tire carrier. You can look at this one, it's overheating. It's a lot harder material, so it's giving the blade a really tough time. And they're both 14 threads per inch. Yes. Or teeth per inch, sorry. Let me go back and try to come over here. We just cut the trail swing and the other tire carrier. Here they are for you to see. You'll notice immediately that you can see the welding seam in this tubing. That means the metal is most likely hot rolled and not a drawn over mandrel process. When you do a DOM tube, which is a cold process, it hides the welding seam a little more. The other thing to really consider is the weight of these two materials. So if you're just looking at purely the steel and the weight and what you're purchasing, this shows you exactly what it is right here. Chromoly tubing took two blades to cut. 
This steel, mild steel is what they call it, took one blade. About 65 pounds, this is 70 pounds. All right, let's come around the front and take a peek inside. So you can see that the thicknesses of the metals are pretty similar, but keep in mind, these almost weigh the same. That's cr mostly chromoly, and this is mostly mild steel. So if you notice, there's a considerable amount of surface rust inside of these tubes, and this one right over here. Now, I can't tell you exactly why that is. There must be some way that oxygen is getting into this front tube to cause that rust. This indicates that there was or still is moisture somehow getting inside of this tube. It could be from a number of things such as the bolt holes um, or maybe even the weld. I would guess it's not the weld. These welds actually look very, very good. Rust is a killer and your vehicle can rust from the inside out without you ever knowing until it's too late. You can see these chromoly tubings, they're a lot darker even on the inside, which indicates that they're high carbon content. So to sum it up, this is chromoly tubing, it's high carbon content, it's a lot stronger per weight. This is why they use this steel in race cars and in roll cages. This, a huge indicator, is this seam weld here, is your standard mild steel. If you consider the cost between these units and the weight of this versus the weight of this, where's your money going? These are the anti-wobble wedge systems. The one from the other tire carrier, you have to bolt from the front of your carrier with a long extension. That's a three quarter inch head. The one on the trail swing bolts from the back of the tire carrier and all you need is a 7 8 or 22 millimeter wrench. The hinge bolts, this is the competitor. This is a half inch. The trail swing uses a one inch with a grade C lock nut. Both tire carriers have safety pins. You can see this one is a lot smaller than ours. We spent the money on the actual safety pin and not so much on the lanyard itself. But we actually have a bolt opener too, so that's pretty cool. These are the two latch assemblies. Theirs is a very nice unit. Theirs has a nice pivot, nice angle, and is easy to use. The Dirtcom Trail Swing is a little bit longer with a full-size handle, a thousand pound weight rating, and as you can see, is a little bit nicer for the leverage. Here are the license plate brackets. The other tire carrier supports the license plate from the bottom. The Dirtcom tire carrier has a license plate bracket that includes a light and a fully enclosed system to protect your license plate. Here's a close-up of the hinge systems. The other tire carrier uses plastic bushings and has a solid piece of metal here. The Dirtcom trail swing uses an oil embedded one inch brass bushings. Those are replaceable. This is not. If you're wondering where your money's going for these units because they are expensive, the Dirtcom trail swing uses a 30 degree raised coming out of your hitch receiver to give you that extra clearance. We also use a heavy steel collar for extra support. These are rated at 7,501 pound. This unit is rated at 10,000. However, we noticed there is no collar around this tow hitch. Most tow hitches, including aftermarket and OEM, all have a reinforcement collar here to help with the longevity of the product. That prevents it from cracking from heavy use. Another thing to consider for those of you that are towing is the longer your extension is from your original tow hitch, the less you will be able to tow. For an eight inch extension such as this one, you're supposed to cut your vehicle tow rating in half. So if you're using this and towing, and your vehicle is rated for 7,000 pounds, you should only be towing 3,500. The shorter the lever, the better. So although this shows a 10,000 pound rating, you'll most likely never get there unless your truck can tow 20,000 pounds. Just remember the Dirtcom Trail Swing is rated at a class four. However, to be safe, which is very important, we rate this at 7,501 pounds. The Dirtcom Trail Swing, we integrated this mechanism. What this does is this allows you to have automatic locking when you open your trail swing. One, two, and three positions are available. The other tire carrier, you have to pull a pin from a different location and manually place it to keep it from swinging open. The trail swing unit is a one-hand operation. 
Both tire carriers have hitches that swing out with the swing arm. This allows you to put your bike racks or cargo racks onto the swing arm and swing them out of the way of your vehicle. The Duracom trail swing allows you to be able to bolt on your accessory hitch. We have built-in set screws so you can use any type of extender and it'll still be wobble free. The reason we made ours a bolt-on is not everybody wants one. There's a lot of hardcore off-road guys who don't want extra things hanging off of their swing arm. This allows modularity and customization for you. Here are the tire mounts. The other tire carrier has a really nice system adjustable for multiple wheel patterns. However, the only downside is you have to line up two holes when you're lifting your tire up. The Dirtcom Trail Swing has a single stud, which makes it easier to align up your spare tire, especially when you're on the trail. The Dirtcom Trail Swing is made of chrome alloy tubing and 316's back plate. Theirs is made of mild steel. Both units are good units. You guys be the judge of what you've seen here. At Dercom, we're very proud of our product. Everything is made in the US of A. We're very proud of that. To keep quality control under our hands, every single trail swing has a specific nameplate. With that nameplate, it has a specific serial number. From that serial number, we are able to track when it was made, who made it, and where it went off to. So keep that in mind when you're purchasing yours, because this one's made for you. So this 10,000 pound rating means, unless your tow truck, not your <laughs> Take a deep breath. Okay, good. Look at him sometimes, like as yeah. he's talking. All right, he disgusts me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, no. Ours is chrome molly tubing, theirs is not. <laughs> Fine. You can recover. You yeah. talked about okay. it. So just say that they're just, you know, made of. Cold rolls. Yeah, yeah just say mild steel. Yeah, mild steel. steel. Makes it easy for alignment to line up your third tire on the back. Third tire? Your spare tire. <laughs> okay. Do it again. Is this a motorcycle? <laughs>